One year after its formation, Trinity Lutheran Church was led to open a school in Utica, Michigan, based on the Word of God. Through recessions, depressions, two world wars, 26 presidential administrations, from the invention of the automobile to the smartphone, this Christian school has been sharing the gospel message with children at the corner of Hall Road and Van Dyke for 140 years. A lot has changed since 1883, but Jesus Christ and his message remains the same. We wish we could include everyone who's played a role at Trinity, and we're thankful for the myriads of faculty members, students, families, and others who've contributed to the history of our Christian school. To thank everyone and include them in this video would take hours. To celebrate our 140th anniversary, Let's take a look at events big and small throughout the history of Trinity Lutheran School, from where we were nearly a century and a half ago to where we are today. Where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. This passage from the book of Matthew guided a small group of German Lutherans meeting above the old Utica Bank on March 4, 1882, to discuss organizing a new Christian congregation. They decided to seek pledges so they could purchase a piece of property on Summer Street, then called James Street, and build Trinity's first church building where our students currently play kickball. On March 29, 1882, the name Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church of Utica was selected. Dedicated to the glory of God on August 20th, 1882, the church was built with the idea that it could be converted into a school when the young congregation could afford a more substantial sanctuary. Just to the east of the new church, the congregation decided to build a parsonage. The parsonage was designed with a wing attached that could serve as a temporary school. So, from the very beginning, Trinity's leadership was not only dedicated to gathering people together to worship God, but also to provide a place for students to learn. On June 7, 1883, Rev. Adolf Klaus accepted a call to become Trinity's first permanent pastor and day school teacher, a position he held until his retirement in 1895. Upon his arrival in 1883, he immediately went about establishing Trinity Lutheran School following St. Paul's directive that children should be brought up in the training and instruction of the Lord. In the 1880s, Utica was a small farm town of about 500 people. It was a blossoming area, but back then, even all of Macomb County had less than 32,000 people. Much of the land around Trinity was empty and reserved for farming and agriculture. A number of buildings have served our students at Trinity since its inception in 1883 that are no longer standing on our campus. This here is an example of the oldest existing portion of Trinity's church and school. We currently use this space as our art room, but back in the 50s, this was more than one classroom. Our current school office and our faculty lounge were also classrooms. A construction project that began in 1955 added four new classrooms on this floor, as well as space in the basement that was converted into classrooms just a year or two later as Trinity grew. The project continued into 1956 when the center part of our current sanctuary was built. It's easy to see that classrooms have definitely been updated since the 1950s, as you look at one of our Ben Q boards here. Our students today might not be too agreeable to having class while sitting on a split basswood log bench without a desk like Trinity students did in 1883. Back then, students used horn books and were excited to use their brand new tablets, which never needed recharging. Older students would use quill pens made from turkey feathers. And of course, 
Trinity students would never dip a classmate's hair in an inkwell. Although these classrooms are the oldest we have on campus, let's travel back in time to the year 1883 to a place where Trinity students first learned about this world and Jesus. Oh, well, here we are. You made it with me. We are standing outside of the original Trinity Lutheran School built in 1883. So although the oldest part of our current campus goes back to 1955, this parsonage was built in 1883. That young church decided to build a parsonage with a wing that would be big enough to host classes when they first started the school. So it was a parsonage by night and a school by day. Pastor Klaus would teach the older kids in the church building and his wife would teach the younger kids while she went about her household duties. So I guess it was a parsonage by day and by night. But this is where Trinity Lutheran School started 140 years ago. So here we are with Paul, the current owner of this house. And Paul, you probably never figured when you bought this house a couple years ago that you'd be filming a documentary in your living room, did you? No, absolutely I did not, no. So when Paul bought this house, he's, he's been doing some renovation. Have you found anything interesting in the home while you've been rehabbing the house? Um, yeah, actually I have. I've found um, plenty of articles, um, old newspapers dating back from the city of from 1935 to 1950s. I've also found some German written literature that probably well succeeds that and I found uh, like this baseball glove uh, for instance. That is not a modern day baseball glove. No, absolutely not. So Paul, there's a lot of work you've done in this house. I'm interested to know, would you like me to volunteer some of our kids at school to come over and give you a hand? Well, you have an abundance of children over there. I could use all the hands possible. Okay, I'll send over a crew of first graders with some paint brushes. Deal. The house has moved, but not very far. The parsonage originally sat in this location here, and it looked like this. In 1922, the parsonage became a teacherage, and Trinity built a new parsonage along Van Dyke Avenue. We are reminded every day that our Savior is at our side. This is His school. Jesus has led Trinity through its darkest days and its finest hours during the last 140 years. He has preserved this education ministry so that we may continue to create disciples who share Christ's story with love. I was pleased in general that God directed uh, the vast number of those families to say, yes, we want what Trinity Lutheran School is all about. And one of the things that I mentioned earlier that is so critical for our new families is for them to understand that this is not a private school, even though many will call it a private school. This is a Christian day school. And uh, I really tried to talk in those meetings to the dads especially, saying, Dad, you are the head of that home. And so as you might be viewing this, uh, moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas, it's so important that you are a role model for your children in terms of your faith. Because uh, the faith of your children is so important and it begins right in that home. And as a Christian day school, Trinity is here to support you, but not replace you. And so please make sure that you continue even when those young people who are now maybe in sixth grade are high schoolers or out of high school, to continue to encourage them to worship in God's house, study His Word, and you be those role models. The work that we then will do together will be most successful because we're going to have young people that have gone through this marvelous Christian day school, but then eventually we'll go to a marvelous sight, and that's with our Lord in heaven.